Good evening. On behalf of the WMF, I would like to welcome each one of you here um, to celebrate our WMF Christmas program. And a big thank you to all those who planned and those who are taking part in our program tonight. Um, in our bulletin, a program when you see a song, we will only be singing the first verse. And hopefully most of you um, know that. If not, there are hymnals in front um, and the uh, number is noted. Uh, our offering this evening will go to our own Sarah Vignus Hamness and her husband Ben and their son Noah. Sarah has dealt with many health issues the last couple um, years, so we just want to remember them and know that we are um, thinking about them and praying for them through this walk that they're taking. Um, the offering plate is in the back, um, right outside in the narthex, so if you want to take an opportunity to give to them, please do so. And now, if you just want to follow along in the program, we're not going to be announcing anything. It'll just be, um, each, thing, each item will just be coming up. After our program, we want to ask you to join us for refreshments in the fellowship hall. And a big thank you to all those who helped um, get those organized and also for serving. So welcome and please enjoy our program. This time I'd like to invite forward those eligible for installation as WMF officers. You can come and just join me right up here on the other side of the altar. <clears throat> Beloved in the Lord, you have been elected to serve as officers of the Women's Missionary Federation. Hear the word of God as recorded in Paul's letter to the Philippians. This is Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Let us also hear the word which, is, which the Apostle Paul wrote to the congregation in Rome. For though the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith, for just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith, if service, in his serving, or he who teaches, in his teaching, or he who exhorts, in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Romans 12, 3 through 8. As an officer of the, of the WMF, it shall be your duty to work with your fellow officers to promote the work and projects of the WMF. It shall also be your greatest concern to labor for the salvation of souls, the edification of believers, 
and the extension of God's kingdom both at home and throughout the world. With these holy responsibilities as an offer of the Women's Missionary Federation, you are to keep in mind the necessity of living a life that honors our Lord both in word and deed. May others always see your good works done out of love for the Lord. I ask you in the presence of God in this congregation, are you ready to, the, to assume the duties of vice president, secretary, and treasurer, and to discharge those duties in humble reliance upon the grace of God and according to the best of your ability? If so, answer yes, by the grace of God. To the congregation, dearly beloved, you have heard the declaration and promise of these three. Will you now receive them as fellow workers and servants of the WMF of the AFLC? Do you promise to assist them in the performance of their responsibilities with your prayers and gifts? If so, answer yes, by the grace of God. On the basis of these mutual and solemn promises, I now declare them to be installed as officers as the WM, in the WMF. You may be seated. nine six and seven for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. among the class of Judah, clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is of old from ancient days.
4 to 5. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. Luke 2, 6 and 7. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Baby Jesus is born. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins, Matthew 1, 21. The story being told tonight is from Luke 2, 1 through 7. After talking to an angel, Joseph was all excited about the birth of baby Jesus. God had sent an angel to talk to Joseph in a dream. The angel had said, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife. The Holy Spirit has come upon her, and she shall have a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. About this time, some Roman soldiers came into the town of Nazareth. I have a decree from the emperor of Rome, shouted a soldier. Everyone must return to and enroll in the towns or cities from which his family had come. Joseph knew he had to obey. We have to travel to Bethlehem at once, Joseph told Mary. How can I go, said Mary in alarm. What will happen to our baby? He's due to be born any day. I know, said Joseph. God will take care of us. We will put our trust in God then, said Mary. He will be with us. And soon they were on their way to Bethlehem. Mile after mile they traveled. How often Joseph must have thought, if only this donkey would go faster. One day, two days, three days went past. How much farther, asked Mary wearily. I am so tired. It's not much farther, said Joseph. I can see the lights of Bethlehem now. Soon they arrived in Bethlehem. Joseph led the donkey down a narrow street to an inn. Joseph knocked at the door of the inn. The innkeeper opened the door and almost closed it immediately. Please, said Joseph, do you have any space? We're full. We haven't room for one more, said the innkeeper. Then he looked at Mary's sad and tired face. He could see she was going to have a baby. There's room in the stable, he said. At least it's warm and dry. The stable, Mary must have thought. The Son of God cannot be born in a stable. Joseph knew Mary was disappointed. Very gently, he took her hand, and he led Mary to the stable. In the darkness, Mary saw a manger filled with hay. <coughs> this will do for his cradle, said Mary. The hay is clean, it smells fresh, said Joseph, trying to sound encouraging. I'm glad I brought the swaddling clothes to wrap the baby in, thought Mary. That evening, there would be no one important to welcome the baby. Only mooing cows, braying donkeys, neighing horses and cooing doves. In the midst of their friendly welcome, the Son of God was born. And they named the baby Jesus. To think that the world little cared that the greatest event in all of history had just taken place. The Son of God had left heaven to be born on earth in a stable, to become the Savior for all mankind. Each time we hear the story of Jesus' birth, remember what he did for us, that he was willing to be born in a humble stable to free us from our sins.
And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Visit of the shepherds. Luke 2 11. Unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The story is coming from Luke 2, verses 8 through 38. Shepherds were often lonely while watching their sheep. Many times the bleating of the sheep and the bang of the lambs were the only sounds the shepherds heard. Nothing much happening tonight, said one shepherd. Even the wolves are staying away. Speaking of wolves, said another shepherd, let's put a little more wood on the fire so they won't come around. Anyway, it seems awfully dark tonight. A little more light from the fire might help. Suddenly their conversation was interrupted. An angel stood before them, and there was light all around. They were so frightened they didn't know what to do. Then the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news, and it's for everyone. The Savior has been born tonight in Bethlehem. You will find the baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. Now, more angels filled the sky. These angels sang, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to men on earth. There seemed to be light everywhere. Then. Just as quickly as they'd come, 
the angels went back to heaven. The shepherds looked at each other in amazement. Angels had come to see them in the lonely fields at night. One shepherd said, if this baby is Christ the Savior, why are we standing here just talking? Let's go to Bethlehem, Bethlehem at once and see the baby. Leaving one of the shepherds behind to care for the sheep, the other shepherds raced away in the night to find their way to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem, they walked along the streets until they found an inn. There, in the nearby stable, they saw a dim light shining from inside. Fearfully, they entered the stable, hardly daring to believe they were about to see the Christ child. But there, in a manger of straw, lay the baby Jesus. The shepherds fell on their knees and worshipped him. And then they told Mary and Joseph what the angels had said to them. On their way back to their sheep and lambs, they told everyone they met, We have seen God's Son, the Savior of the world. Matthew 2, 1 through 6. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Matthew 2, 7-12 through 12. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their their treasures, they offered him gifts, golds, and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. A star leads the wise men to Jesus. You shall find me when you shall search for me with all your heart, Jeremiah 29. 13. And this story is coming from Matthew chapter 2. Far away to the east of Judea were some wise men who studied the stars. How bright the stars are tonight, said one wise man. Look at that star, said another, as he pointed to a star that was brighter than all the rest. That must be the one we've been expecting, they said to themselves. It's a sign from God, said a third wise man. God is trying to tell us the king of the Jews has been born. Yes, I think you're right, one of the men said. Let's leave right away and go so we can see for ourselves. But we must bring along gifts fit for a king, the first wise men said. The men quickly packed their belongings, put them on their camels, and started on their way. It took them several days to travel across the desert. When they got to Jerusalem, they went to see King Herod. We've come all this way to worship the new king, they said. We've followed his star in the east, and it's led us here. Can you tell us where we can find the new king? A new king. What were these men talking about? King Herod was a wicked and selfish king, and 
He didn't want anyone to take his place on the throne. He quickly called the chief priests and scribes and asked, where is the new king to be born? One of the prophets said he'd be born in Bethlehem, they answered. Now the king was really worried. He called the wise men to come and talk to him. When did you see this star? And how long have you been following it, he asked. The wise men told him about their studies which led them to Bethlehem. I'll tell you what I'd like you to do, King Herod said, sounding very kind and concerned. Go to Bethlehem and find the child and then come back and tell me. I want to go and worship him too. Once again, the wise men set out for Bethlehem. Look, said one of them, there's that star again. It's the same star we saw in the east many weeks ago. They tried to hurry their camels as they clattered down the streets of Bethlehem. At last, the three wise men came to the place where Mary and Joseph were staying. When they saw the baby Jesus, they fell on their knees and they thanked God for him. And then they brought their gifts to Jesus. There was gold, frankincense, which was burned on the altar, and myrrh, which was an herb. All these gifts were precious and very expensive. The wise men wanted to give him the very best. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son whom you sent to us that silent Christmas night, that night of Mary and Joseph in the stable. We thank you so much for that glorious gift of you coming down to, of you humbling yourself and coming down to save your creation, taking on our flesh, taking on our form, and then on the cross, taking on our sin, though you had no sin, we thank you so much for your death for our sin. We pray that you would constantly remind us, sanctify us in the truth of this glorious gospel of your son. Come as a baby on Christmas, and we pray that as we 
look at that coming. We look to for his second coming again this season. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now receive the benediction, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Go in peace. The Lord is with you.